This is an engine rebuilding video for a 4G64 engine out of a Mitsubishi van. I'm rebuilding the black engine there which I had put a new head on and it's done 40,000 Ks but it turns out it's a two wheel drive engine. So I sourced a four wheel drive engine with a deeper sump and balance shafts and that's the red one there on the right which I've put back in the car and it's done 10,000 K of trouble free motoring. The engine I took out uh, looks like it had done 160,000 Ks before I put a new head on it and it's done 40,000 Ks in that time but it's going to go through a full rebuild now. The engine was dipped in a caustic bath which stripped all the paint off back to the bare cast metal. I then painted it with a rust converter and a metal primer and then put some engine uh, enamel gloss black on. Okay, here's the engine that I painted earlier with a nice gloss enamel paint job. Uh, I purposely didn't uh, paint over the Welsh plugs. Uh, on personal engines, I would paint over the Welsh plugs because I know they've been done. Um, this engine, I'm selling it, so I just wanted uh, to show that the Welsh plugs are nice and fresh and new to whoever buys it. Uh, basically, we have to make sure that the any previous gasket material is nicely removed from the inside. Also make sure if you do paint an engine that you masking tape up or cover up the insides. You do not want paint getting into the water jackets inside the engine. The particles could get into your water pump seals and slowly destroy your water pump seals. So these were nicely taped off to the edge. Uh, if you can leave the, tamper expo the taper exposed on the edge that's fine, but if not, um, don't worry about it. Best thing to use is emery tape, uh, very thick sturdy cloth tape and just go on the insides of each hole and make sure that uh, all the gasket material has been sufficiently removed. All right, so we're gonna use a drift, big chunk of metal around the exact size or bigger than the uh, Welsh plug itself. That'll get it the bulk of the way until you hit the edge of the engine block. Then we're gonna turn it around and use something that's a bit of a snugger fit on the inside Ideally, if you could find something that comes right to the very edge of the Welsh plug to knock it in, beware of knocking something in with a smaller socket from the inside. You can end up bowing the Welsh plug and it'll reduce the crush on the outside, which means later in life it might pop out. Um, but it's generally okay if it's a, it's a nice snug fit to hit it home the very last way, but make sure it's uh, at least uh, a few millimetres clearance on the outside. The gasket goo that I prefer to use is uh, Loctite number three, or now it's called MR5923, um, but it's usually aviation gasket sealant. It's a non-hardening sealant, very black and thick. And uh, in the engineering workshop I worked in, that's all they use for Welsh plugs. There are other specialised gaskets that you can buy, gasket materials, but uh, this is very good all round gasket material for Welsh plugs. Also for cleaning, uh, it cleans up very, very easily with methylated spirit. For choice of hammer, I'm going to use a ball peen hammer, nice and balanced, uh, nice controlled hit. You can use a ordinary builder's hammer, but these are basically designed for thrashing in nails, so they're uh, hard to have a really controlled strike, whereas the ball peen hammer's got a nice way at the end, you can choke the hammer very easily and uh, change change uh, the pressure of hitting. To make sure all the insides are very clean before applying the gasket material. And of course, make sure there's a good covering of gasket material all the way the, around the outside of the wash plug. You hear the tone change when it hits the block. So now you can see here we're trying to knock it down to the edge of the tapered section there. We want to make sure that we don't knock it in too far. If you do knock it in too far you lose crush. With every millimetre that you knock it in too far there's less metal squeezing against the Welsh plug so make sure it only goes as low as that. If you do knock it in a millimetre or so extra it's no big deal but if you knock it in two or three more mils more, like an eighth of an inch, then you might have to 
dig out the welsh plug and start again. As you can see here it's come come down to the edge of the tafer. Uh, you can see that the edge of the tafer just starting to appear so that's a quarter of a mil down that's fine and as long as it's basically even with the tafer then it's good to go. So just to refine the method a nice stroke to the uh, once it's level with the head Wipe away excess gasket material so you can actually see the edge. And then you want to gently hit down on each quadrant with the very edge of the uh, drift and give it nice light taps just to bring it down. Go opposite each time. Above. Below. Then wipe and inspect. Still not low enough. One side, other side, top, bottom. Wipe and inspect. Alright, perfect. That's for cleaning the top of the block. You want to make sure you get all the old gasket material off. When you take it to an engineering workshop, they will check with a flat edge the head for flatness to make sure it's perfectly flat. They'll check each way, they'll put a feeler gauge under and make sure it's only a couple of thousands of inch difference. If the top of the head uh, block is fine, uh, just you need to get rid of the gasket material that'll be stuck there from the previous one. You need a very uh, coarse sandpaper like this belt disc. And again, get emery cloth. And just to demonstrate, you want to wrap the sandpaper. You want an engineer's file. Now, an engineer's file, they're more expensive and they're guaranteed to be flat. It's not a cheap file from the department store or the hardware store. This is a proper engineer's file for an engineering workshop and it's guaranteed to be dead flat. What you want to do is you want to wrap the sandpaper around and you want to go on a 45 degree pattern and make sure you get, keep going until you get rid of all little instances of gasket material that you feel on the surface. It doesn't matter if there's some stains left behind as long as there's no substance or material. Inspect the water jackets to make sure that they're okay. So you should be able to see in the light cross hatch pattern where the file has come in both directions. If you can remove the dowel pins uh, you'll need a proper puller or you can get a tap that's about that size, tap it in and, and pull it out. They're very hard to get in and out though, uh, so be very careful of those. You want to inspect the water jackets to make sure that there's no, not too much corrosion. Now, these ones have a little bit of corrosion, signs of repair work, but they're all in very good condition. And you can see the uh, cylinder bores have been honed and you can see the crosshatch pattern down the honing marks. If you're concerned at all about any of the uh, water jackets on the head, put the head gasket back on and just make sure they don't go too far out and around these holes. Always good to put the head gasket on to make sure it's the right one and that it fits and all the holes line up before you start assembling. And this one is fine. Okay, just showing the difference between the old bearing and the new bearing. You can see there's plenty of wear on that bearing, but there's no scores or deep scratches, which would indicate that uh, there was metal filings in there. It's just pretty much standard wear. You can see against the brand new one there. 
might be able to see the engineering workshop uh, they checked and measured all the sizes but they do give it a nice light linish to make sure there's no rust and no high points so that it's perfectly flat and goes back together onto the rod properly it's always worth before you start fitting bearings just to give it a feel yourself make sure there's no raised bits or edges or gouges uh, give everything a good wipe down make sure there's no lumps of dirt and grease because even the tiniest little lump of dirt or grease will uh, could change your crush on your bearings just a matter of lining up the tongue in the hole and the groove get a nice firm press make sure it's even side to side Gotta get yourself some engine assembly lube. This is good stuff from CRC, Molly with graphite, especially molybdenum disulfide. You can just use molybdenum disulfide grease by itself. I've used that before, but I uh, just found this one special, so giving it a whirl. So you don't need a super thick coating. Bear in mind that it'll be squished out. There's only thousands of an inch clearance anyway, so as soon as that crankshaft goes in, most of this will be squished out. It just needs, everything needs uh, every bare surface needs a nice smear coating and um, it'll be squished out anyway but you don't want any dry spots or any exposed metal Okay, for peace of mind, just checking everything's a nice light sliding fit. So that everything's been properly machined by the manufacturer or the engineering workshop. Just worth a double check just to see that there's going to be no piston slapping. So here's the rings put on, uh, you may as 
we'll just consult the manual about having the gaps at certain sides on the piston. Um, read the manufacturer's instructions. And uh, there's plenty of videos online from the manufacturer showing you how to put those on, so I won't bore you with the details. So when you line up your ring gaps, make sure when you put your ring compressor on, that the little fold overlap doesn't line up with any of your ring gaps because that could pop a ring out and then as you hit it down it'll catch on the block so just make sure you know where your ring gaps are positioned and basically make sure the fold of your ring compressor uh, doesn't get in line with one of your ring gaps also leave a little bit out the bottom for the skirt and, and uh, Cover your rod bolts with some hose so that it doesn't damage the bearing surface on your crank. And then make sure you turn your crank around so that it's as the uh, begin bearing is as far down as it can go. In this case, just put it in lightly. I like to go around with a small hammer and just make sure the Everything's nice and level with the surface of the head. Now the idea is not to strike the piston like you're going to hit something. You want to hit and push all in the same motion. So it's a nice through hit, not a, not a surface hit. I start to work it down. When it gets close to where the rings are, just a nice firm, and then it's in. Okay, as you can see on the flip side, this one's slightly twisted. It's just a matter of getting in there and making sure it's nice and straight. Nice and straight in that dimension. Note that you cannot rotate the crankshaft around to meet the rod, it's too far out to the side. And make sure you've got your engine paste on, and then Push the piston up from the underside, making sure that it's in line with the crank. So we just pay attention to where the tongue of the bearing is. There should be a mark on there. This one's got a punch and a scribe number one in there. It's the number one cylinder. Bearing tangs together. Or slide fit. Nuts on finger tight. Get ready for talk and repeat. So torque on these ones is 20 Newton meters plus a quarter turn. I can't comment on why it's not just a final torque, but there you go. Okay, that's the torque. Quarter turn. It's about there. Quarter turn through 90 degrees. Once again, just a bit of a witness mark as a sanity check. Okay, so just measuring the clearance of the oil pump vanes to the housing. So 4,000 for an inch just seems to lift it a bit, and 3,000 is just a light sliding fit across the other side. So 
It's 3,000 an inch, just a light sliding fit. Fourth hour lifts it. Three hour light. Three thousandth of an inch light sliding. Fourth hour just lifts it a bit. So there are between two and five thousandths of an inch clearance between the top of the gear and the housing, so that's fine. So on the driven gear, on all gears, we're looking for any abnormal wear in the teeth. As you can see, this one has got signs of wear on the outside, signs of wear on the inside, but there's no no major lips or gashes or gouges. Also want to check out the bearing surface there. Just looks like some normal wear, normal wear and tear. And what you want to do is you want to polish it, uh, something like 1200 emery tape. And we're not taking any real material off, we're just polishing it for inspection. So that'll show up if there's any gouges or dips or corrosion marks. And that one looks very, very clean. I can't feel anything with my nail on there. Okay, it's the same with the driven gear. I'm just looking for any gouge marks, any signs of excessive wear or corrosion or pitting. This one looks fine. Again, bearing surfaces, making sure there's no gouges or pit marks. Just a light polish, not taking any material off, just for inspection. You can see that one looks nice and flat. Other side as well. Nice and flat, no gouges, no corrosion. Give a polish. Okay, then we're just inspecting inside the shaft bearing hole there. There's a few little marks on the inside there, but it's nothing serious. It's just general wear and tear. This is probably done a quarter of a million kilometers, um, over 150,000 miles, so it's generally accepted wear and tear. Also inspecting the surfaces where the gear sits, just to make sure that there's no gouges and anything that's going to rip off bits of metal and make it go through your engine. Because remember, in these types of engine, the oil pump picks up straight from the sump, unfiltered, pushes it through the filter, and then dumps it back in the sump after it's gone through the engine. So you, if you ever see any forms of uh, metal in your sump, then the chances are it'll go through your engine. So just checking the wear of the shaft, you probably can't see the rocking there, but you generally don't, you only want a few thousandths of an inch and this is slightly rocking, which is a little bit of wear, but good clearance there. So that'll be fine. Bear in mind when you're putting these together, there is two alignment marks. And we're also expecting the face of these, that looks fine. Make sure the alignment marks are in place. So I'll be lubricating up these gears with paste as well, uh, with engine assembly lube, just to make sure that all the surfaces on first startup uh, have some grease on them so that they can turn before they get the oil up. Because remember the oil is only being picked up through this little tiny gap in the gears spinning at thousands of RPM. So it's imperative that there's some form of lubrication in here beforehand. I'll also be filling up the sucker from the sump side so that oil will come in and enter the fuel pump, uh, the oil pump. And I'll also be, before I put the cylinder head on, be injecting some oil down into the oil galleys so it makes it the other way through the delivery side of the oil pump, just so there's some oil sitting in the system before first startup. So now for the oil seals, the main pump oil seal. You can pry them out with a screwdriver, but make sure that you're not gouging the other side and digging right in under. So you just want to get the lip, 
the first sort of solid piece come back off the housing a bit so you don't dent it it should just pry out you can see damage marks here where someone else has probably done the same thing but not as carefully just check the inside make sure there's nothing untoward in there this one you can probably hammer in from this side if you need any more than a hit with your hand you can probably just grab a light hammer and give it a punch out Just inspect the inside. You can see it's been replaced a couple of times. I'll just clean this out and degrease it. Coat it with a bit of oil before putting it in and then just hammer it in. Just checking for corrosion on this one. It looks like it's a copper one, so that's that wash plug will be fine. No signs of corrosion on either side. No signs of oil leaking out. It's all good. Now to replace this one, there's an O-ring sitting underneath here. Most engineering kits should come with it. Um, it basically screws into here and seals off oil coming out that side of the thread. If you don't have a C-spanner, you can, you can just get a screwdriver and knock these. It's not ideal. It's the backyard dodgy way to do it, but it will work. Um, but if you do do it that way and you don't have a proper C-spanner, I do recommend putting some uh, blue Loctite on the threads because you don't know if you're talking it back up properly with the hammer with the hammer and screwdriver approach. And you can see the previous person's used a screwdriver as well, so I'll replace that O-ring now. The best way to remove gasket material is with a razor blade making sure that you don't score or gouge the surface even though that can fill up with gasket material as you can see on this this one it's very very hard old gasket it's really hard to get off some of it comes off very easily and basically chips off or snaps off but what you're better off doing is getting yourself one of these twist lock abrasive pads that go on a drill just twist on and then just grind them off, making sure that you don't actually gouge uh, too much into the surface. It's just a nice light grinding over the entire surface. And stay well away from the oil pump housing. You want that to be as flat as possible, so be very careful around this area here. With the oil pump housing again, we're just looking for gouges and parts with this big grooves. There's, there's a few little grooves in here but nothing I'd be concerned about. Bearing surfaces look clean, no big scrapes and gouges. I'll give the surface a light sanding with 1200. Redo the gasket surface and that's good to go. So this is the castellated nut for the driven gear for the oil pump. Uh, it's a brand new o-ring. I put some rubber grease on the o-ring to help with the seal. I do highly recommend putting some Loctite on the thread uh, because you're using the hammer and the uh, screwdriver method you don't know how much torque you're putting on so it's just safer to um, make sure you put some Loctite on the thread this is just a medium strength Loctite to make sure you can get it off in future and that the next person who puts uh, the engine together won't have a nightmare trying to get it off This is the last place you want to track down a leak when you're working on the car. Basically just going by sound.
So here's the finished product. Uh, all gasket surfaces bared down ready for a new gasket. A new gasket measured up to suit. Uh, with the oil pump retaining screws, I always put a bit of Loctite on the screws. It's, this Loctite doesn't interfere with your torque strengths. The, the reason I do is because it's a highly critical part. Uh, your torque wrench, I've only got one size torque wrench, which is a 3 8 torque wrench, and the 17 newton meters for these bolts is way down on the scale, which means it could be inaccurate. And because there's potential inaccuracies, it's only be plus or minus a couple of foot pounds, but just always be rest assured with uh, a medium strength Loctite on there. Also with the oil filter and regulator housing, it's all cleaned up. There's a lot of gunk that sits inside these areas. Uh, so make sure you get in there with a, a, a cleaner and a wire brush and lots of degreaser and get rid of it. Check out your plunger for your pressure relief. Uh, there's also a steel guide in here, you probably can't see it. But make sure that, uh, give it a bit of a polish with 1200, make sure there's no gouges or scratches that are going to affect its operation. Do the same on the inside here. Now, the way this works is when you're getting high revs in the oil inlet side, puts out too much pressure at high revs or greater restriction, it'll put the plunger up and then just dump oil straight into the sump before it puts it back into the, uh, the remainder back in th through the filter. Make sure you clean deep in here. A lot of times it's full of sludge, even though you do regular maintenance, regular oil changes, the sludge will end up in these parts of the oil pump. And if there's lots of sludge there, it won't operate um, very well. Always pays to get a brand new woodroof key. Yeah, see in the light there's a a tiny little hairline hairline wear on here and the engine reconditioner said it was about two thousandths of an inch. It's barely perceptible with the fingernail. And he recommended a retaining compound for seating bearings. So I'll be fitting this uh Loctite retaining compound quick metal just takes up fine little gaps in shafts and, and bearing surfaces uh, on the outside of the bearing surface as it seals into a crankcase or in this case on the inside of this pulley beside the woodruff keys a bit worn and that'll take up any any gaps any microscopic gaps in the shaft So for fitting the main gasket, I do recommend the Aviation Gasket number 3 or Loctite MR5923, the same thing. Very thick black, very thick black one. The reason I don't use silicon in these sorts of gaskets is because if you put too much silicon on and it squishes, squishes in when you bring the tension down, Little bits of silicon can break off and get into the oil wells and get into your oil pump and into your oil filter and cause all sorts of trouble. So I, I generally don't like using silicon near you know, high pressure oil way, oil ways that are oil ways that are prone to getting um, bits jammed in there. So the gasket I got for this does not line up with half the holes. Uh, so the best thing to do is paint it with the non-hardening gasket sealant and just create an imprint of it and then cut the gasket out from that.
You gotta watch this uh, paper gasket it can raise up and that could interfere with your sump sealing. So just get with a razor blade and make sure you shave the top of that gasket off. Otherwise you might have headaches and sump leaks later on. Same as this side. Make sure you put some assembly lube on the oil pump plunger. Make sure it moves nice and freely in there. Alright, so in order to tighten the crankshaft bolt to a hundred foot pounds, I just rigged up two flywheel bolts pinching a nice solid bar, and so it'll prevent rotation of the crankshaft. So now we have the uh, crankshaft bolt on. We can turn everything over, make sure there's a nice smooth movement and everything. And of course before that, it's a good opportunity to get a syringe and syringe the sides of the cylinder walls just to make sure there's some lubrication on the cylinder walls before you start cranking stuff over. You can see down in there, put plenty of oil down in there just so I can crank it over and make sure everything's smooth. So what I'm going to use to seal the rear crank gasket uh, oil seal housing is a uh, three bond, three bond 1104. It's a rubber based gasket. It's not silicon. I much prefer it on the sump surfaces and any around any seals. Um, it's again, it's rubber. It dries very hard to the touch. I find it just easier to deal with than silicon on sump gaskets. Don't have to wait. It's you know, built for crankcases of motorcycles that are metal to metal seal. So that's stuff I'm going to use. So I'm going to prime the oil waste for the oil pump. The oil pump spins here off the camshaft, delivers oil through this galleyway here, which then has a little flip back which puts uh, oil into the bearings and back to the bearings of the oil pump. The main channel continues into the oil pressure regulator that can pop, pop out and dump stuff straight back into the sump. It then goes up through the feed line into the outside rim of the oil filter and it goes down the center travels down through here and then you can just see a little depression there which is the other oil way that I filled up previously and so I'm going to inject oil down those both both those holes so this one will drip make its way back to the oil pump and prime the oil pump and this one will just prime the oil ways uh, down into the main bearings The 
manual might not tell you exactly to do this and to prime the oil ways. Um, as long as you've got assembly lube in the oil pump and assembly lube on everything, it should pick up oil. But there's no worse feeling than when you're cranking over the engine and you can't see oil coming up to the head and you start to panic that it's not actually getting there or it's airlocked. And just injecting oil down into these galleyways coats them with oil, even though it'll drain out, everything will be coated with oil, the oil pump will be coated with oil. It'll just make pick up of the oil so much quicker and easier. It also makes sense at this stage to uh, pre-fill the oil filter with some oil already in there just so there's no big air locks or pressure locks on first starter. Okay, so this is what your cylinder head should look like coming back from a reconditioners. Also put a warning on the front that there can be dry scale in here. They have cleaned the head, it should be perfectly clean. Just taking some rust treatment or corrosion treatment off the uh, front. But they do warn that there will be scale and dry scale in the hole, so just to make sure that um, you blow that out with compressed air. So you want to clean and inspect the cylinder head bolts, sure they're not dirty. Um, don't cover them in oil, don't soak them in oil. If there is rust, try and buff the rust off without taking too much coating off. Um, you can get an oily rag and wipe them just so they've got a film of oil, but make sure they're relatively perfectly dry. Um, if, if the manual wants you to put oil on, it'll say to put oil on, and then it'll be a different torquing sequence. If any of the bolts, don't feel like they're threading in. Uh, I checked all these beforehand just to make sure there was no foreign objects in there. There's nothing blocking the threads. So everything should spin freely. If it doesn't spin freely, just swap it to another hole until you find one. It might just be a, a bolt and thread match that needs to happen. Okay, so this can be tricky, helps to have your camshaft set out so you can sort of see where the lobes are. Have a good uh, indication of your, your manual handy. I've oriented this the way I want to assemble it. So a handy trick with lifters, lifters can drop out very easily when you flip this whole assembly upside down. Easiest thing to do is just get a cable tie. The right size, flip it over and that'll hold it in so when you flip it upside down nothing will fall out. Nothing like a nice shiny new factory bolt to replace the camshaft one. Someone else had just put a high tensile one in there, which is fine with the washer, but these uh, factory bolts are made for it and designed a bit better. Mm -hmm. 
what you want to do is you want to jam a screwdriver between the head and the camshaft so that when you tighten it down it's got a nice purchase under there preferably something with a flat shaft on it like that so it distributes the load Well, I hope this video has either convinced you not to do your own engine or it's convinced you to give it a go. Always use a trusted engineering workshop and trust yourself, use a manual and ask for help. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.